Hi everyone! I got a wonderful question from Jackie that was about my last painting that I did and she wanted to know how I did the leaves that were littered on the ground. That they were in great detail and if I could go in and show everyone how that was done. That is what this video is all about today. So I'm starting with a blank white canvas because the underlaying or blocked in phase is very important when doing something like this. So I just have all my colors up here right here and this is Alizarin Crimson, Scarlet Red, Yellow Ochre, Lemon Yellow, uh, Burnt Umber, Pale Green, and this was Moore's Black. So underneath is going to be the mid-tone. So I'm going to take because it's underneath of the leaves, um, I'm going to take a little bit of the Lizard Crimson, a little bit of Moore's Black just to darken it up because we want it to be dark because that's where the shadows are going to be. And a little bit of Burnt Umber because Underneath all that is also dirt. So, water down my brush. Always keep. I'm using acrylic paints with this this time, by the way, just because when I do um, the leaves, I do a lot, a lot of layers. That's why it takes me weeks to to finish a painting because I, I wait for a layer to dry and I add some more on top of it. So acrylics are just gonna dry faster and that's why I'm using acrylics for this. So I'm going to mix all that up. And we get a really nice dark color, but it's not gonna be our darkest and it's not our lightest, it's just somewhere in the middle. So what I'm going to do with this, I am going to lay down very similar to the road and the sides like I did in my leaf painting, which if you haven't seen that, I'll link to that. So I'm just going to go back. This is really roughly done. So I'm just really not um, don't judge me on how I paint with this okay and this is going to be the road is going to have a little bit more brown in it I'm just going to roughly get it down the road I'm not going to do anything with And when you're doing things like this, um, a lot of people have their own preference, but I love leaving the underground, the under part messy, because when you start to layer on top of it, that adds just a little something. Like stippling that like this, you can't adds get a ton of little texture that you just can't get, and it's underneath everything. You're going to layer over the top of this, so a lot of this will be hidden with layering on top of, but will show through just enough to help add a bunch of texture. And this works great with anything, leaves, grass, you name it, it works great with it. So we go back to this and I'm going to do what I did in my earlier painting is this hillside started here and it went down. So this top part right here, you could see with the sun and then it got continually darker as we went down. The same right here. You could see this with the sun and it went up and all this was dark and then it slowly went lighter right here to show that it was a hill. So in order to do that, 
I'm going to start with this part right here and it's not going to be too far from that. We're just going to add in a little bit more red and a little bit more water so it'll flow. I'm just going to do this really quickly and when you go back the frontage part gets smaller and it gets bigger when it comes up closer to the viewer. Okay, now blend both of those in. And we're going to do the same thing with this side. We're going to blend them kind of in together. And we're going to go this way a little bit more with it, make it bigger, and then bring it out like that. Now, when we start to go down, we're going to add in a little bit more black to this mixture and make it a lot darker, but still keep that reddish tone because we want it to look like it's the same hill. We don't want a completely different color. So, and while it's still wet, and this is what's great about oils is they blend really easily but I'm like I said I'm doing this in acrylics to show my process quickly so let's see if I can do the same thing on this side before it dries and the farther back you go the the less saturated the colors are going to be Again, like I said, with this, this is going to add a lot of little details that you don't have to do. And you have to do this when the paint is still wet. So if you're working with acrylics, you're rushing against the clock. Or you can make your acrylics act a lot more like oils if you just uh, keep spraying it down with water. So I'm going to add a little bit more black to this and we're going to work up the hill more. And this is the great thing when you see it and it's, it's looking too black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add burnt umber into this mix. Maybe with a tiny bit more red. And we're going to make a brownish reddish tone. And still add black, but it's going to be more on the browner side. Okay. Now let's see how that looks. And that's more of what I wanted. So. My little sketch right here it's gonna the hill is gonna start going up so all of this in the middle is going to be that dark brown and I always kind of swipe with the ground and that will help curve it a little bit more too. We're just going to color, color that in just for the fun of it. So adding in a lot more dark. This is going to be way way dark down here because it goes way down into the hill. But the light is still bouncing off of here so we're not going to make that too incredibly dark. And again um, if you stipple this just all over the place. That will add a bunch of texture without doing too much. And it's nice to change up colors all the time. So we got some red in there. We're putting some dark color in here. And don't just stick to the road unless you want a very clean road. But in my painting, I came out and I came on to the road. And that just showed their leaves everywhere. Once that is all dry. 
that is essentially the the base layer the blocking in phase and this is what's so important about this layer is this is what we have to build on top of so now with that you get into smaller and smaller brushes from here so for block in phase I've been using a number 12 so we're done with the number 12 and we are going to go into I have this uh, one of brushes that I really love it's a filbert a number four but it's so ruined and everything there's paint shoved down in the furrow and it's just just a beat up brush but what I love about it is this gets so much texture, very literally. Um, and you can do it the same idea you can do with like a fan brush, anything that's um, tip, but just use the very tip of it. You can even do it with a flat or a bright brush, um, which is like this. You can do it with something like this and just tap to get it. So, back to these, I in my painting I have the light source coming from right here, so all of this is a lot lighter. So what I'm going to do is bring in the light over there, and we'll just do some yellow and you'll start to see how this all forms together. All I do is tap on bring some more and you just tap on where all the highlights are going to go and you don't do this everywhere because there are going to be a variations but I start to do that and then seeing how the light comes through it's going to probably disperse somewhere around here okay so we do that okay and then We'll just start varying. This is yellow ochre. And we just start varying it. And if we start to get darker, okay. And when we get to the leaves down here, because there are going to be leaves, and it's the same idea up here, we want to use the same color. And then go into our dark color and just change that dark color and make it a little lighter. You tap on the palette before you go to the canvas because that will make an even distribution on your bristles so you don't get a big glob on the canvas. So then you just go like this and this just takes practice this is not something that you're going to be able to get I wipe off the excess and then get it again because it could start to build up and that's not what you want if you start to get too much paint onto your brush and that also creates blobs. So if that starts to happen, just wipe it off, and then scrape that back up, tap before you go back into it, and that. So your mind automatically understands that these bright leaves and these yellow ochre leaves are the same leaves from the same trees, but these ones are obviously getting the sunlight hitting at them. So, after we do all that, 
I'll put some more over here. And these are harder to see. because they are in the shadows. And then we do the same thing. We're going to take the red that we used underneath. Okay, and we're just going to do the same thing. Tap, tap, tap. And we're going to tap here and there. And it's going to start to come together. I have that and I just got a tiny bit of that dark color and added it to it. So we can add it over here, just here and there. And we slowly build it up like this. And it's really honestly just a bunch of tapping. And when you start to go up a hill like this, I don't know if you noticed me, I'm, I'm moving my brush as if I'm following the hill line. You go like this to follow the hill line and then you come down and then you curve. It's like a little S and that will help to define that that's curving for you. So we can already start to see where the highlights are gonna show up and where the um, shadows are. So from there, for these back ones, this is bright red. So I'm just gonna go into that a little bit and tap on my palette. And then we're gonna go very suggestively we're gonna put some of that down and that is going to show you more. This red and that red will look the same, although that's bright red, and this is alizarin crimson. It, it looks like it's from the same tree, just a little different. It shows that this is more in the shadow. So now comes the harder part. <laughs> the part that most people don't like or aren't willing to get to, but that makes the difference between realism or not. And that is the detail. Now you take a little liner brush and do the same thing, but individually place just the leaves. I'm going to grab some titanium white, which I just added that to my palette, and I'm going to add it right here to this yellow. And I'm I'm this is more of a highlight, so this is uh one of the ending stages <laughs> to it, but I'm going to add it in now because you can still add up. Just keep going over. Do some brown leaves. Do some orange leaves of a few different color oranges. And then when you get to this point, that's too much water. See, I'm still wearing acrylics. There we go. That's more like paint. Um, it's the leaves back here are teeny tiny, so just a bunch of little dots like this. And I'll zoom you in.
a bunch of teeny tiny dots. So after you do a ton of little dots like that, and this takes hours, you can do a ton of tiny little dots. And I'm doing this really, really super fast, but so they're not perfect, they're not too precise like I would normally do. I'm just kind of trying to get them down on canvas so you get the idea of what I do. So then after we did that, that is the titanium white and lemon yellow mixed. So then I would do, I do the same thing. Take a bunch of this white and add it to this. Let's get some more water. Hopefully that's not drying out. If it is, we're just gonna add a bit more red to it. It's no biggie. Okay, so then here's a red. And let's, let's do a bunch of little dots of red. And we're not being too precise. We're just putting a bunch of little dots places. So then we do the same thing. Let's do some yellow into our red. And we make an orange. And because it's far back here, we need to lighten it up. So we're gonna lighten it up with this with titanium white and we're gonna do more dots so every time the layer dries we go back over and layer more dots And layer more dots. And that is all I did. You just have to get a ton of, mix a ton of different colors and lay down a bunch of dots and the first few layers of dots can be really messy even like what I'm doing they can be really really messy like this because it's really only I would say the fur the last three layers that really really show so and when you get closer to the viewer. And I zoomed you in. Let me zoom you back out. Okay. When you get down here to the viewer, you want to make deliberate strokes. Okay? 
that's a leaf. I'm going to do it a little lighter so you can see it, but that's a leaf. You know, you want to get bigger on top the closer you get to the viewer. So as the back is a million tiny little dots, you can do those dots all around. I want to even show you using a fan brush. You can even still get a bunch of little dots. That's what the base is. You just want to make a ton of different colors, make a muddy mess, but each layer has to dry on top of each other first. You can go back and forth between darks and lights. Oranges. Here's, let's get some orange going. Let me get that water flowing. Need some more yellow for that. So I'm going to speed up this part where I'm just adding a ton of little dots with the fan brush just so this doesn't ha end up being a five hour long video. <laughs> Building up the underneath like this um, with a fan brush or any brush that can make a bunch of little dots just adds a, a lot more texture and the more texture you add the more your brain will condense it all and make it look like a million little leaves with not very much effort. And you can even do that with some highlights. Let's try. So I just made some orange and I'm just taking my titanium white and I'm mixing it in there with it. And again, tap to kind of just e even the dispersal. And as long as it is the under layer and not the top layer, to establish where your highlights are going to go, you can do that. And that's a great base layer. It has tons of different colors. But you will always have to finally resort to... The liner brush is the only thing that I've really found that gets the best detail. So even after you've done all of this, you're going to want to go in and Um, the black, you can do this, this is an alternative step that I have done, um, but I kind of like to wait till I have a lot of my dots on first, to where you go in and you kind of just underline underneath. Because they're all, there's going to be shadows underneath them. So you can either do this first and try it out. Tell me which one um, works best for you. Is if you do that first or do it second. And then go into your color that you're doing. And mix and put it right on top. And kind of build the leaf essentially. And almost like painting every leaf, but you really don't have to paint every leaf. It just kind of makes it look like you're doing that. And it depends on how much effort you want to put into it and how good you want it to look determines how long it's going to take you. Because you could keep going for months 
getting photo hyper realistic paintings or you could say it's abstract you can tell those are leaves and then leave it at that and let's go into some yellow ochre and add some leaves remember we're close to the viewer so we're not only dotting but kind of striping don't do it all of the time you know like and vary up the angles some leaves are gonna go this way some leaves are gonna go that way some leaves are just dots still because there's a lot of leaves covering up but you need to be thicker and bigger the further up you go the further back you go you get smaller and make a bunch of little dots and that will help the depth you can already see the depth starting to form. And this is so much easier with acrylics because it can dry so much faster. This is so awesome. And I'm getting all of this down so quickly. You gotta love, you gotta love acrylics. So, and that's all I'm doing. I'm just, I mean, let's go into some of this. And doubt. And no biggie. Let's go into some of this. Sure, why not? There's some green leaves probably on the ground. And dot. and stripe and if you make a mistake like maybe that leaf right there it's too big too noticeable you don't like it not a big deal and you go up now remember this is doing this very quick and very messy ish and I'm still getting an okay result you can start refining it down more and more but something like that. If you don't like it, you know, take a different color, go to the center of it. Now you just made two leaves, you know? And so I've already showed you how to do this and it's pretty refined really. I'm gonna start to do these leaves right here. Let's try and bring you in a little bit more. So, we're going to start getting more and more refined. So you pick a color and you just get more precise about where the leaves are going to go. We dip into some red and lizard and crimson. And you just keep building and building and building. You go over the top of colors and build. And then maybe bring in some more black here and there to break up some more leaves. Try and get the ground floor a little bit here and there. Maybe you want some more green right here. Some are dots, some are not. Maybe you want some more brown. Dots. And this is why if you don't let the under dry, you're gonna start to make a big muddy mess. And that's what I'm starting to get because it's not drying all. But that is all I do. I just make a big muddy mess on my, on my palette, um, mixing every single color I can possibly think of that you can find in a leaf. Um, and I just go into it 
and then dot and stripe and dot and start to build up all these different lines and layers. So then the very top layer, what I'm going to end up doing, and that is going to be the most refined one. I'm going to go into my black and this time I'm going to purposely start to outline just a few leaves here and there. And when you start to outline just a few, the coolest thing about your brain is it fills in the rest. So when you start to do this to just a few, and if they're out here, make sure to do it to them because those definitely will have some shadows to it. And then they start to form a bunch of leaves. And you could even, we're going to go into a red, we're going to go into our scarlet red, and purposely add some more here and there. Anywhere where there might be a gap and maybe needs a tree or leaf anywhere there's a gap anywhere where there starts to be too much of a pattern and you take about an hour or so Depending on how big your project is, doing that. Here's some orange. And not my, my finest work. But if you keep doing that, you can eventually get to the work that I have done. And so that is all it is, is that. Let's do some yellow. Let's do some water. Send that down. And let's do some more yellow. Why not? And we're just going to keep going with this just a little bit.
So you don't want them as bright as up there, but I do want to show a little bit. And the more precise you start to get, you can start to see it starting to come together, right? Well, there you have it. Just because I have paint on my palette, I'm going to do more. Actually, not. A f don't think I'm too much of a fan of all this green. So I think I'm gonna try and get rid of it a little bit. That's also a good thing about it. So there it is. That's essentially that is all I do to create the looks of fallen leaves. And I just do this and this throughout this whole thing. I do it all the way down here and I do it all the way up here. Up here at the top of the hill, I get lighter like I have right here because the sun is hitting the top of the hill. As I come right here in all of this, I keep it dark like this to show that this is all in the shadows as well. And then I also add um, twigs and brush and rocks and everything to this side because it's not all leaves most of the time. So I hope this has answered your questions. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this. And if I missed something or you need a little bit more clarification, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I read every single one of them and I will be so very happy to answer any of your questions. Okay guys, bye.